Good evening, welcome to another bulletin from the Angry Astronaut, part one of a double shot anyway from uh, today. So uh, looking forward to all the information that I'm going to be sharing with you as I wait impatiently for the Virgin Orbit launch. And uh, it's coming in less than 10 days. Um, I am scheduled to fly out of here on the 15th. And even though I don't think I can officially share the launch date with you, well, it's going to be before that, like right before that. So you can do the math. Subscribe. And in the meantime, as you may have heard, uh, Blue Origin is once again taking another shot at the whole HLS contract thing because the NASA is giving them the opportunity to do it. And for those of you who are a little confused about that, well, NASA had an initial contract for an HLS system, which was really only for the first landing. They have extended that since then to Artemis 4 as well. So Starship is now going to be carrying out both Artemis 3 and Artemis 4, but they also have a contract for something called the Sustainable Lunar Lander. So this is only for the first couple of missions, and then perhaps Perhaps an entirely different lander is going to be handling the sustainable part of things. But the Blue Origin National Team lander was anything but sustainable. It's two-thirds non-reusable, at least that's the way it used to be. But the national team has a new face. They've dropped off one of the partners, brought on a new partner, well actually more than one new partner, and as a result, they could actually come away with this thing and have an opportunity to take mankind to the moon. As a matter of fact, depending on how things go with Lunar Starship, they could be the first company to deliver human beings to the moon in 50 years. <laughs> So as many of you probably remember, the human landing system and landing on the moon has been a long soap opera for Blue Origin and Jeff Bezos. Originally, they proposed more money than NASA was prepared to pay, well, more money than Congress had even authorized for them, so they went with SpaceX because their solution was about half the price. Jeff Bezos sued twice and actually took the thing all the way to federal court before finally giving up, and after that, the Senate authorized $10 billion to be used for a second lander. In addition to that, there's also a sustainable contract that has nothing to do with the original contract that's supposed to be used for ongoing lunar missions in the future. The national team, however, has gone through a number of modifications and changes since the last time they took a shot at one of these contracts. There are still lots and lots of partners, but the biggest change that has been made thus far, well, two of them actually. First of all, they've added Astrobotic, which is a very, very good move given the fact that Astrobotic already has a great deal of experience in building lunar landers, and as a matter of fact, they're going to have real-life experience with landing something on the moon within the next few months, but on top of that, they dumped Northrop Grumman and signed on with both. Boeing. Now that is a far more questionable decision. Now there were two major things that made the Blue Origin HLS a piece of crap compared to its competitors. First of all, most of it was not reusable. The ascent element from Lockheed Martin, well, it was reusable and is actually largely based on the Orion. Nothing wrong with that, and as a matter of fact, since Lockheed Martin has already completed a lot of the work on the life support, that is an excellent portion of this lander, both reusable and largely complete already. Now, a somewhat less impressive part of this HLS system is the landing system, or the descent element, as they call it. And this is designed by Blue Origin and largely based on their Blue Moon lander. It's very big. It uses BE-7 engines, which have yet to be proven, by the way, and it can carry about 8 tons down to the lunar surface. So the descent element is not a reusable portion of the lander, although ultimately 
ultimately it could be based on what JF Jeff Bezos says it could make use of in situ hydrogen and oxygen which is what its engines run off of in order to be able to reuse the lander so it has a pretty substantial capacity not nearly as good as Starship but then again if you're only talking two or four astronauts you don't need that much payload and on top of that potential reusability in the future it is the transfer element that was one of the biggest problems with this lander 100% expendable designed to deploy the lander and then crash into the moon uprange from the landing site and it was designed by Northrop Grumman and largely based on their Cygnus resupply ship however Northrop Grumman is now out of the picture in my opinion Boeing is probably going to pick up the torch on that one and that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a good thing Boeing is not known for making good reusable vehicles and once again I must emphasize it's important that Blue Origin go for a reusable solution this time because if you're talking about a sustainable lander something that's going to create a sustainable presence on the moon sending out new transfer elements new modules every time you want to land on the moon is not a good solution you need reusability but frankly that's not the biggest problem with Blue Origin's solution. The biggest problem is safety related and it comes in the form of a 10 meter ladder. This has always been the Achilles heel of this system. I mean look at how tall this damn thing is. It's so tall that the only safe way to work on it on earth is to use a bucket truck. So what makes people think that this is going to be safe to navigate without a bucket truck and wearing an environment environmental suit. And as I said, I don't see this problem being rectified. On the contrary, it seems that Blue Origin looks at the enormous height of this lander as an advantage that the crew being located in the ascent element with a whole lot of equipment between them and the lunar surface is a good thing for safety. And they don't seem to acknowledge that really tall ladders create all kinds of accidents on Earth and the problem is going to be come Pounded by wearing a big, bulky environmental suit. We'll see if they come up with some kind of solution for this. But here's why I feel that Blue Origin might still win this contract in spite of all of the problems. It doesn't require any LEO refueling. Unlike Starship, it doesn't need a whole lot of infrastructure in order to get it to the moon. It's an old school kind of lander. Even with its two thirds non-reusable features, it does represent a more simple and straightforward way of getting to the moon. And as a matter of fact, if the whole Starship LEO refueling thing proves to be a lot more complicated than we think it might be, Blue Origin might perfect this lander before Starship is ready to take humans to the lunar surface. And Blue Origin may indeed end up being the first company to land humans on the lunar surface surface. However, there is one serious wild card being played in this game that nobody was anticipating. Northrop Grumman has not only left the national team, they're building their own lander in conjunction with Dynetics. Dynetics, who has always been my favorite in this competition because of the 100% reusable aspects of their landing system, the Alpaca as it is called, may prove to have the inside track because Northrop Grumman is not only a good partner, they also know all of the national team's dirty secrets, which may give Dynetics a tremendous competitive edge in this ongoing battle to land humans on the moon first. Alpaca has always been the best solution for Artemis, simply because you don't need a massive ship to take two or four astronauts to the lunar surface. It's perfectly capable of dealing with all of Artemis's needs for some time. It's 100% reusable and it's also slung very close to the ground as you can see. It doesn't have any problems with these massive ladders nor does it have any issues with elevators or anything like that. It's a very, very good solution and now they have a national team partner helping to carry them to the finish line. And there is of course another problem that the national team has to look at. They've created
created a lot of bad blood with NASA. First of all, with all the lawsuits which held up the entire Artemis HLS project by six months, but also by presenting a price that was just far too high and one they could have dropped considerably on the front end. And only after Jeff Bezos had lost the bid did he offer a $2 billion incentive outside of NASA's normal procedures in order to try to sleaze the deal at the last moment. That is something that could work very much against the national team. But on the other side of the equation, picking up Astrobotic was a very, very good thing. And they have another opportunity to build reusability into the lander and perhaps even fix that ladder problem. But until they do, I actually feel that Dynetics has the advantage here even more than they did before. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, please. We are on our way to 100k. I know we can get there. And as always, stay angry about space.